What would you think about a stock that's shot up 200% in the last year? But what if the same company has promising technology, but it just made a major business pivot that has and will affect its revenue stream for the foreseeable future? And what if the real story isn't about the stock's momentum, but whether a high-risk transition bet can actually pay off? Today, I'm breaking down Navitas Semiconductor, the technology, the numbers, and of course, the Navitas 2.0 pivot and the risks that investors like us need to understand before chasing the rally. Now, if you're new to the channel, hey, what's up? My name is Rick Orford. I've been trading since 1999, and no, I'm not a financial advisor. That's a good thing. I break down the numbers so retail investors like us can make smarter, more confident decisions with our money. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. And you all know how much I love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment. So I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 stock picks from their popular product, Stock Advisor. Stock Advisor has beaten the market by almost six times. Go to fool.com slash Rico to get your 10 stock picks right now. So let's start with the basics. Navitas Semiconductor was founded in 2014, and today they're headquartered in Torrance, California. The company develops next-generation power semiconductors based on gallium nitride, or GAN, and high-voltage silicon carbide technology. These materials allow devices to handle higher voltages, operate at higher frequencies and temperatures, and switch power far more efficiently than traditional silicon can. Navitas's GAN-fast power ICs combine power, drive, control, sensing, and protection into one single device. And that integration allows faster switching and lower energy loss. And its GeneSick products use trench-assisted planner structures designed for medium voltage grid and infrastructure applications. Right now, Navitas is in the middle of a strategic pivot known as Navitas 2.0. Management is repositioning the company towards faster-growing, higher-value markets where GAN and SICK offer the biggest advantages. And that includes AI data centers, high-performance computing, energy and grid infrastructure, and industrial electrification. Navitas also holds more than 300 issued or pending patents and is the first semiconductor company to be carbon neutral certified. With that in mind, let's have a look at what's been happening recently with the company. On December 17th, Navitas appeared on NDTV Profit to discuss accelerating GAN adoption across high growth markets. And this kind of media exposure helps strengthen Navitas's credibility and increase awareness of its technology. And that coverage followed a strategic partnership announcement earlier in December 2025 with CN Semiconductors. The goal of the partnership is to accelerate GAN adoption in India and build a local end-to-end -end GAN ecosystem. These companies plan to co-develop GAN products, ICs, and system modules, while also establishing domestic supply chain and manufacturing capabilities aligned with India's Make in India initiative. Now that we got the headlines, let's have a closer look at the numbers. In its third quarter financial report, Navitas posted revenue of $10.1 million, and that was down 53% from $21.7 million a year earlier, and down 30% from the $14.5 million in the prior quarter. Operating losses came in at $19.4 million, which is an improvement from the $29 million loss reported in the same quarter last year. Navitas ended the quarter with $150.6 million in cash and cash equivalents and reported a current ratio of eight. That means the company has $8 of current assets for every dollar of short-term liabilities. So, that indicates a very strong liquidity position despite its lowering revenues. However, management guided just $7 million in revenue for the fourth quarter as it cleans up operations and prepares for the final transition to Navitas 2.0. So revenue is definitely under pressure in the short term. And that makes the next question critical. What is going to push Navitas forward and what could hold it back? Well, Navitas's biggest advantage is its pure play focus on next generation power materials. That focus gives it the technical strength 
in the 800 volt space. This is where traditional silicon chips struggle with heat and efficiency. Navitas's GeneSick and GANSafe technologies are designed specifically for these higher voltage environments. The company also reached a major milestone by developing 1200 volt GAN chips. Historically, GAN was limited to lower voltage systems, forcing automakers to rely on silicon carbide for the 800 volt EV platforms. This breakthrough means that GAN can now handle those voltages, allowing EV chargers and converters to be smaller, lighter, and more efficient. And of course, by leveraging wide band gap materials, Navitas is addressing power and efficiency limits in both electric vehicles and large-scale AI infrastructure. In EVs, this can reduce fast charging times, and in AI data centers, it can lower total power losses across the system. Navitas also announced an 800-volt DC architecture for next-generation AI platforms that are developed alongside NVIDIA, and that signals a shift where power technology becomes a core performance driver in AI infrastructure, not just a supporting component. And all of this feeds directly into Navitas 2.0, as the company positions itself as a power enable, enabler across EVs, and AI rather than just a component supplier. But these opportunities come with some real risks. The most significant risk today is supply concentration. Navitas relies on a single GAN wafer supplier, TSMC. TSMC has announced plans to stop GAN production in 2027. So this is a material operational risk because it directly affects Navitas's ability to ship products and grow in future markets. Even if Navitas secures a new supplier, there is execution risk during the transition. That could impact product availability, margins, and even revenue. Navitas also concentrates much of its testing, packaging, assembly, and manufacturing in Taiwan and the Philippines. Management has noted that disruptions in these regions could delay shipments and material affect operations. Then there's the risk tied to Navitas 2.0 itself. The company is shifting away from its legacy revenue base towards larger, more complex markets. Management has acknowledged that this transition may require additional capital, involve longer product cycles, and delay payback. So the risk isn't that the strategy is wrong. The risk is that the transition period is financially and operationally demanding, and the payoff could take longer, much longer than investors expect. So how is the market pricing in all of this? Well, right now, Navitas stock trades around $10 a share, giving it a market cap of about $2.3 billion. The stock is highly volatile, though, with a 60-month beta of 3.16. That means it tends to move about three times as much as the overall market. Over the past 52 weeks, though, the stock is up nearly 200%, and that kind of move reflects optimism around GAN, EVs, and AI infrastructure, but it also increases downside risk if execution disappoints. So with that, is Navitas stock a buy at today's levels? Well, consider that a consensus among nine analysts rate the stock a hold, and that's down from a moderate buy just three months ago. The average score is 3.22 out of 5 and has declined. There is a high target price of $13, and it suggests about 29% upside from recent prices. And I have to agree with this hold rating. I mean, I would rather wait on the sidelines while Navitas works out its supply concentration risks and proves that it can execute on the Navitas 2.0 transition. But before I wrap, let me turn it over to you. Do you believe in what Navitas is building right now? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're there, if you found the video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps others find the video, it supports the channel, and it makes sure that you don't miss out on my next deep dive. Well, that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.